Welcome to Church Online. I'm Darren, and it's great to be back with you this week. Here at Church Online, we hope that this time leaves you feeling closer to Jesus and encouraged by God's words. We're in week three of our series called One, a series about how God uses one person to make a huge impact on the world and uh, how he can use each one of us to do the same. We learned about a man named Gideon in week one and a queen named Esther in week two. And if you missed either of those videos, definitely go back, they're worth the watch. This week, we're moving into the New Testament to look at a story of a demon-possessed man who had an interaction with Jesus that changed his life forever. Before jumping into the story, we have a chance to worship together in song, so let me pray for us and then we'll worship together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are thankful for these stories that we can go back and learn about the impacts that were made through people who were feeling unprepared or unqualified, how one person could change the course of history. And Lord, we just pray that we are open and willing to be that one person. In Jesus' name, amen.
to feel Oh, I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Welcome back to the third week of our series one. The series where we're looking at how God uses individuals to make a huge impact on the world and how he can use each one of us to make big impacts of our own. To recap, we have already learned about Gideon, a man who described himself as the weakest member of the weakest family in the weakest tribe of Israel. A man, despite all those things, God used to lead an army to victory. We also learned about Esther, a young woman taken from her home into a foreign land to marry King Xerxes. Esther used her influence with the king to save the entire Jewish population from being killed. Both of these Bible characters have something in common. They were both Israelites, which means they were part of the nation of people God had specifically set apart and marked as his own. They have both seen God show up on their behalf time and time again. Gideon and Esther's stories are found in the Old Testament and both lived a long time before Jesus was born. The person we are learning about this week is different from the first two. We are moving from the Old Testament to the New Testament during the life and ministry of Jesus to meet a man possessed by demons. Backstory. Jesus' ministry lasted about three and a half years, and during that time, he developed a reputation for doing miracles. He healed the blind, he cured the sick, he healed the paralyzed, and he even raised people from the dead. Why did Jesus do all these miracles? Well, to show compassion and love for others, and to prove that he was the promised Messiah or Savior. In Luke 8, we find the story of Jesus and the Legion and get to see one of those amazing miracles unfold. Jesus and his disciples sailed to the country of Gerasene, directly opposite of Galilee. As Jesus stepped out onto land, a madman from the town met him. The madman hadn't worn clothes for a long time, and he lived in a cemetery. He had broken chains on his arms and legs from his many prison escapes. As Jesus began to order the demons out of him, the madman asked Jesus, What business do you have messing with me? You're Jesus, son of the high God. Please don't give me a hard time. Jesus asked him, what is your name? The madman responded, Legion, my name is Legion, and begged Jesus desperately not to order the demons inside of him into the bottomless pit. Legion wasn't his real name, but it was what the many demons who possessed him called themselves. The madman spotted a large herd of pigs nearby and begged Jesus to order the demons inside of him into the pigs. Jesus gave the order and the demons went into the pigs. The pigs went crazy and stampeded over a cliff into the lake and drowned. The pig farmers were scared to death and ran off to tell everybody what they saw. Many of those people who heard the story went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the madman who was previously possessed by demons sitting at Jesus' feet. He was now fully clothed and no longer crazy because the demons were no longer inside of him. The people from Gerasene were so confused and frightened by what had happened that they asked Jesus to leave. So Jesus got back into the boat and was about to leave when the man whom he had delivered from the demons approached him. The man asked Jesus if he could go with him. Instead of welcoming him on board, Jesus responded, go home and tell of everything God did for you. So the man went back and preached all over town everything Jesus had done in him, that Jesus had cast out the demons inside him and set him free. That's the first thing we can learn from this story, that Jesus can set you free. In this story, the man was being held captive by demons, and because of this, he wasn't living the life that God had planned for him. But Jesus set him free and changed his life forever. In John 8, 36, Jesus says this about himself. So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. Just like he did 2,000 years ago, Jesus is still in the business of setting people free. He frees people from wrong ways of thinking, bad habits, from their past, their hurts. And more important than all of that, Jesus sets people free from the punishment of sin. In fact, that's what he's all about. The miracles he performed were to set the stage for the only miracle that really matters. The miracle that happens when a sinner allows Jesus to forgive them and set them free. And that's what he can do for all of us. The second thing we can learn from this story is that once you are free, tell your story. 
Like we heard earlier, once the man was set free, he wanted to join Jesus and his disciples, but Jesus had another plan. Jesus wanted the man to return home and be the one to tell everybody what had happened. Luke 8, 38 through 39 says, the man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him home saying, no, go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So he went all through the town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. Believe it or not, church historians have studied the history of Christianity in the area that the demon-possessed man lived. They discovered that the reason Christianity survived and thrived there for so many generations can be traced all the way back to this one life that was changed in the story he told, and told, and told, to impact many. If you are a follower of Jesus, he has set you free. You were once held captive, you might even say possessed by sin, but Jesus Christ has forgiven your sins and set you free to live the life God has planned for you and to live an eternal life in heaven but don't keep it to yourself. Jesus frees us from our sins because he loves us, hoping we will then go and tell our story to others so that they can also be set free. John 8:36 says, so if the son sets you free, you are truly free. If you're a follower of Christ, then you are free. You're no longer chained or weighed down by your past mistakes, your past hurts, the punishments of sin, negative thoughts, you are free. There are over a hundred verses in the Bible about freedom. My encouragement for this week is to read through the story of Legion in Luke 8, 26 to 39. I also want to encourage you to look up the word free or freedom in the concordance in your Bible and pick a verse a day to read about freedom. What's a concordance you might ask? Well, uh, it's a list of words in alphabetical order found in the back of your Bible. It's kind of like an index. It's a cool way to look up specific topics or words in the Bible. And I hope that you take time to read some more about freedom this week. See you back here next week for our final week of our series, One.